Hi, math friends. Welcome back. We are ready to do lesson 20 today. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's see here. All right. Oops. Sorry about that. All right. Today on lesson 20, I can recognize and make use of whole or part whole relationships within tape diagrams when solving a variety of problem types. So we're going to look at different types of tape diagrams today, and we're going to look at the whole. Okay. The last one we did, we had the part and part already solved and we had to find the whole. Today, we're gonna look at whole and part to find the part, okay? So <clears throat> for today's lesson, you're actually going to need your problem set to solve it. But if you don't have your problem set where you can print it out, that's fine. It's not a big deal. We're, we're gonna do it on the video. So we'll also work it out on our whiteboard. So if you wanna work it out on your whiteboard with me, <clears throat> which you should be doing. If you have access to where you can print out your um, problem set and you wanna do it on paper that way, by all means do it that way. If you know how to split your screen or your adult knows how to split your screen where you can pull up your problem set on one side and me on the other, you can do that too. Just like I've got our video camera on this side. Hi. And then I've got our lesson on this side, okay? So that's a split screen. If your adult can do that for you, more power to you. But if you don't have the problem set right there available to you, it's okay because we're gonna do it in our video. We're also not gonna do an application problem today and we're not going to do a fluency today because we're gonna be working out the problems for our problem set, okay? So we're gonna just go straight into this and I've got, oh, let me make her bigger. little bit smaller and move it over oops no i can't there we go can't move it over well poop okay it's all right problem oh huh interesting there we go what is going on hold on guys i don't know what's happening hold on friends Hold on, let me see if I can fix it. Okay, I think I fixed it. Hopefully. All right, let's try it. Here we go. Oh, okay. That was crazy. It wouldn't quit moving. Welcome to class, my marvelous mathematicians. It's Miss Kaylin here, ready to guide you through another lesson. Today, we will be thinking about heart whole relationships and tape diagrams to help us solve word problems. For today's lesson, you're going to need your problem set. Go ahead and pause the video now to go grab it. When you're ready, press play and we'll get started. We've already talked about it. So if you need to get your set and you have access, go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Let's do a little review before we get started. We learned that tape diagrams were these awesome models we could use to help make sense of a problem. We have seen tape diagrams that look like this. But you know what I've been wondering? Hmm. I've been wondering if that question mark ever moves. Every time we write it, it's always at the top. But there are other parts to this problem. Hmm. I wonder if that question mark ever moves. Now I'm curious. Are you curious? I'm curious. Let's investigate. Let's do it. All right, so if you have your problem set, we're on number one. The first problem allowed. Nine dogs are playing in the park. Some more dogs came to the park. Then there were 11 dogs. How many more dogs came to the park? Hmm. Let me read that again because something sounds different. I don't know if we have both of our parts. Listen carefully and see if we have both parts. Nine dogs were playing at the park. Okay, One part. I can visualize that. I can see nine dogs. You're so cute. Some more dogs came to the park. Hmm. I can visualize some, but I don't know if it's the same some that you're visualizing. I don't think we know that part. Then there were 11 dogs. Oh, so now I see the total in the end. There were nine, so more came. The number of dogs got bigger, but I'm not sure by how much, which makes sense because the 
question and asking is, how many more dogs came to the park? Less wrong because this picture in my head is a little less. I bet you if you put it in a tape diagram, it would be super clear to see. Let's draw line by line. Go ahead and pick up your marker and draw with me. Here we go. Nine dogs were playing at the park. So let's draw nine. Let's both draw nine dogs in the beginning of our tape diagram. There's my nine. I'm gonna put nine. Remember, and then I'm gonna put with the number D and? for dogs. <laughs> yep, a letter. I think I'll label it with P for bark. Hmm. Since the dogs are at the park. Let's change now, ours to P. Let's do the next one. <laughs> I'm going to keep moving down so you can see how each part builds. Great. My next part. Some more dogs came to the park. Do we know how many dogs came? Hmm. We don't. Well, so. We don't know how many more dogs came. What is that thing we write when we don't know what goes there? It's unknown or missing. <gasps> Just like we did with the total before. We can put a question mark. Oh, yes. And I'll still put a rectangle around it because I know it's the other part. Oh my goodness, our capacity came off. We see the question mark can go in different places. Before the question mark was going to be told, but in this problem, that's not what's missing. In this problem, looks like we're missing the part. Let's finish our Kate diagram to make sure. I'm going to read that line so we can add to our line. Then there were 11 dogs. 11 dogs. At the very end, there were 11. So I think that's the total. Mm -hmm. The total number of dogs. Total. Let's draw our arms to show the whole thing. 11 for our total. And put an 11 there this time. Not a question. Because we know there's one. We'll label it with a T. How many more dogs came to the park? You know, this tape diagram can help us find out what we're looking for. Take a look at it. Or you can look at yours in the paper. That part's missing. Watch. There's an easy way I can find it. There are nine. I know this one was 11, so I'll just count on. 10, 11. So how many did she have? I colored in that last one because it shows me where I need a 10. Great. If we find our question, let's write our number sentence in our sentence. We had nine to start. Plus, some more dogs came. And now, 11 dogs. Math position, how many more dogs came? We had two. <laughs> That's right. Two. Let's write that in our number sentence and our sentence. So two more dogs came. Great. Read the sentence with me. Two, two more, more dogs, dogs came, came to, to the, the park. park. <laughs> Forgot my research. Let's go to the next problem. Now we to number three. Skip number two. Okay. Go to number three. You heard what she said. Skip number two if you're doing your problem set this and go to number three. Is about a roller coaster. Ooh, I love roller coasters. Show me your best roller coaster with your hands. <laughs> I like that it twists and turns. There's so much fun. And find out how many people are on this roller coaster. 13 children are on the roller coaster. Three adults are on the roller coaster. How many people are on the roller coaster? Okay. Math position. Let's go ahead and draw our tape diagram and figure this out. Let's do this. We learned in our last problem and for pre that the question mark can go in several places. For this one, instead of solving, I want you to look at two scenes of work. Okay. Great. Guess what, mathematicians? Somebody here made a magical mistake. One of these students has an incorrect tape diagram. 
it's your job, math detective, to figure out which one. I want you to pause a minute and take a look at both of these students' work. Use it to make sense of the problem. Which one of these doesn't match the problem? Hmm. Take a moment now to look. Okay, so I'm going to pause it. And let's look at that. Let's look at A first, okay? So I'm going to label this A because we're going to look at A first. Now, their tape diagram has the question mark here, and they labeled it A. And I'm thinking that A is supposed to be for adult. Then they had three here, and they had a C, which I think is supposed to be for child. Then their total was 13. So let's look back at our problem and see if this is correct. 13 children are on the roller coaster. So C for children, are there 13 here? No, no, there's not. Let's keep going. And then it says three adults are on the roller coaster. Um, that's an adult. Do we know how many adults are on the roller coaster? We do. So this is not correct. So let's go back and look B, okay? So B says that you have 13 children a lot. This is C for children. If you'll look on B, they have that right there. Then we had three adults, one, two, three. So far that matches our word problem, okay? How many people are on the roller coaster? We don't know how many people are on it all together. So we need to write a question mark for our T. Now, if you'll look at B, that's exactly how it's done so far. So let's see. 13 plus 3, so let's write out a word problem, or I mean a number sentence. 13 plus 3 equals, well, we can do like that, where we break the 10 and 3, and then add 3 plus 3, make 6, and then 10 plus 6 equals 16, or you can count on 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so there are 16 people on the roller coaster. So B is the correct answer. <clears throat> Did I hit play? Yep. I think I see it. Let's look at each one one by one to see if it matches the word problem. <clears throat> let's start with student A. Okay, student A, let's see if we match our word problem. 13 children are on the roller coaster. Where do you see 13 in this student drawing? In the total. At the total. That's not right. 13 children are on the roller coaster. Maybe. Let's keep reading. Three adults were on the roller coaster. Where do you see three in there now? Under children. As a part. Okay, well, three adults is a part, but I think 13 children is a part too. Because if I have some children and some adults, and it asks me how many people there are, I have to put those together to find the total. 13 children, that's a part. <clears throat> I don't think that this is the correct tape diagram. Let's look at the other one to make sure. Oh, 13 children are on the roller coaster. That's right here. The adults are on the roller coaster. That's right here. How many people are on the roller coaster? It's Student 16. B has the correct tape diagram. So we decided to roller coaster with me on to number four. All right, so let's <laughs> erase. Go to number four with me. Oh, mathematician, you knew it was coming. When we're learning challenging things, we know we're going to have a Kaylin challenge. <laughs> We got a challenge. I'm challenges. super excited for this Kaylin challenge. We get an opportunity to really think. This next word problem is about a roller coaster as well. And it's super similar to the one we just did. Be careful. 
something is different. I'm going to read it to you. As I read it, I want you to think, is this a part or is this the total? 13 people are on the roller coaster now. Hmm. Is that a part or a total? Three like adults total. are on the roller coaster and the rest are children. How many children are on the roller coaster? Okay. Mm. I'm going to read that again. Listen carefully. I heard them talk about people, children, and adults. I want you to think, what's the total in this word problem? What are the parts? So let me read again. 13 people are on the roller coaster now. Three adults are on the roller coaster and the rest are children. How many children are on the roller coaster? Pause the video now to take on your Kaylin challenge. Draw the correct tape diagram and make sure you have a number sentence and your answer. When you're ready, press play and we'll go over your work. Okay, so let's pause and let's look at this. I mean, we've read through it twice now, but I'm going to read it one more time, okay? 13 people are on the roller coaster now. That to me sounds like it might be the total. Three adults are on the roller coaster, okay? So that could be a part. And the rest are children. That could be a part. How many children are on the roller coaster? So let's draw this out. We know that there are 13 people on the roller coaster. So I'm going to put 13 as my total, but I'm going to leave it up here like this because now I've still got to draw out my tape diagram. Three of the adults or three of the people on the roller coaster are adults. So let's draw out three. One, two, three. Well, we know that there are three adults. So let's make a tape diagram for that. The rest are children. We don't know how many are children, but we know that there's a total of 13 people on the roller coaster. So now we have to figure out how many people or how many people on the roller coaster are children. So let's look at what we have. We know that there are three adults plus some children equals a total of 13. So we need to figure out what our total is, okay? So you can do this a few different ways. You can count on three up to 13, or you could even say 13 minus three. So let's do that way. 13 minus three equals something. Still the same problem, but this time we switched it up to subtraction, okay? So if I count on from three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, I get 10. If I take three away, look here. If I take this one away, I'm left with 10, okay? So I could say that there are 10 left. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, oops, 12, 13. I had 10 to make 13. So 10 is my answer. There are 10 children on the roller coaster. Welcome back, my Keelan challengers. Take a moment to look at your work and compare it to the work on the screen. Look, we had a question mark here, but we filled it in. This time, the question mark was a part. Why? Remember, we had it right there. Why was there a question mark here? Because we didn't know how many children were on. So we can even. Put I'm a going to mark quickly here. redraw this so I can show you my. We start with thirteen as the total. Thirteen people were on the roller coaster. So I drew a big rectangle to show my total because we don't have any parts yet. And I labeled it. 
three were adults. Well, I know three is a pretty small part of 13, so I made sure that part was tiny, a little smaller than the other part. And then I had a question mark for the children because I'm not sure how many, but I know when I break 13 into three and another part, three and 10 make up 13. That's awesome. Your brain has been working super hard for you, learning something new. So let's give it some love. My brain is great. My brain is great. My brain will grow. My brain will grow. The harder I work. The harder I work. The more I'll know. The more I'll know. <laughs> and that's so true. Now it's time on to your problem set. Your must do problems are two and five. Have fun and enjoy your work. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Miss Kaylin. All right, so we're going to come over here and I'm going to scroll down through all of this and look at our problem set. Oops. Okay, because our problem set today is number two and five. Now we just did one, three, four. We just did those. But let's look at, let me make this a little smaller so we can see it better. There we go. Let's look at what it's wanting us to do for two and five. So let's go back up here where it says our directions. Read the word problem, draw a tape diagram and label, write a number sentence and a statement that matches the story, okay? Now, here's an example of a tape diagram up here in the corner, but it's not late. You have to label it, okay? Make sure you're labeling it. So let's look at number two. 16 strawberries are basket for Peter and Julio. Peter eats eight of them. How many are there for Julio to eat? Okay, so let's just kind of look at that real quick and then you can go and work on it. There are 16 strawberries in a basket for Peter and Julio. So 16 is going to be my total. So I'm going to write 16 with a T and then do like Miss Kaylin did and make a giant tape diagram because we don't know how many are in each one yet. Peter eats eight of them. So let's draw eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one is Peter. We need to know how many Julio has left to eat. Okay, so I've drawn out my tape diagram, but I still have to figure out how many Julio has left to eat. So I can say eight plus something equals 16 and solve that counting on, or I could say 16 minus eight equals something and I can take away, okay? So let's count eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. How many did I have here? Well, there's five, six, seven, eight. So how many did Julio have? Julio had eight. So we can take that question mark away, make that into an eight. Okay, so make sure that you are doing a tape diagram, labeling it, and then solve it. Make sure you fill it in right here. Julio has eight strawberries. I wanna see this on here, okay? You can use your shapes to make the boxes. See how easy that was? Look how easy that is. I can even make a line in between. And then I can even use my painting tool here and make dots. See how easy it is? Okay, so it's very simple to use your tools that you have in Kami to solve this and make those boxes. I'm gonna erase this though, because we're gonna go on to the next one. All right, let's look at number five. Ben has six baseball practices in the morning this month. If Ben also has six practices in the afternoon, how many baseball practices does Ben have? Ooh, this one's a little tricky, guys. Okay, so let's look at that again. Ben, has six baseball practices in the morning this month. So let's put 
six, and I'm gonna put M for morning. Ben also has six practices in the afternoon. So let's make six more. And we're gonna put A for afternoon. How many practices does he have this month? Okay, so what can I do there? Six, 12, he has 12 practices. So this, I wanna see on this, okay? Draw this out, label it, and then give me your answer. I need to see this in order for you to get it right, okay? All right, friends, I just did two and five with you. I just gave you the answers to two and five. So go back, work on number two and five, do your exit ticket also, and then I'll see you guys on our next lesson. Goodbye, my friends.